All right, so um, I hope you managed to f solve the problem by yourself, but if you didn't, that's all right. Let's have a look at uh, what I implemented. Uh, if you open the, the URL with the starting code, this is what you the, what you see. It's basically we already have some animation in place. We already have the ball bouncing up uh, and back down, but the shadow doesn't move, and the movement of the ball itself is really mechanic. This is because we only have a simple bounce animation with two steps from and to, uh, and we are just translating the translate the, the y value. Uh, in a linear manner from 0 to 350 pixels. If you open the URL with the solution though, you will notice that the movement is much more organic now. Uh, and I also have synchronized the, the animation of the shadow of the ball with the, the movement of the ball itself. In order to, to, to do the synchronization and keep them uh, playing together, we can create a variable to save the animation parameters. So you will notice that in this variable here, I can change the duration of the animation, and both of them are going to keep uh, playing together. This is because I'm using SAS, but if you're using regular CSS, you can achieve something sim similar using uh, CSS custom properties. Now, if you scroll down, you will notice that instead of having the simple from and to keyframes that we had in the beginning, now we have four steps in the bounce animation. This allows us to have more control between one segment and the other so that we can distort the ball by applying a transform scale when it hits the ground, another when it's moving vertically, and then restore its original shape when the ball gets to the maximum vertical position. Notice also that we can specify different timing functions per segment of the animation so that we can add some resistance when the ball is moving up as if it was being affected by gravity. For the shadow animation, uh, it's actually quite similar, but I have a simple animation from and to. And I'm also changing the scale of it so that the farther away the ball is from the ground, the tinier the shadow is. And I'm also applying uh, an adjustment to the blur filter. It's important to keep in mind, though, that animating things like the blur filter is actually quite costly. For this specific example, that's not a problem because it's a super simple animation and we don't have anything else being rendered in the, in the page. Uh, but if we did have something else rendering in the page, this is the sort of thing that we could have problems with. So remember what I said before, uh, if you can, try to stick to animating only transforms and opacity. That's it for today, so I'll see you in the next video.